welcome or welcome back. I'm Shannon Makes, chronic dumpster diver and fabric recycler by day, circus artist by night. And in last week's video, I took on the $20 challenge in an attempt to show that sewing nice garments doesn't necessarily require fancy equipment or a huge budget. And this is what I came up with. If you haven't seen that video, I do recommend you go watch it first because I go much more in depth on all the parameters of the challenge. But if you've already seen it, you'll know that I decided to take the challenge one step further by making not one, but two garments for $20. And as a reminder, that includes not only the fabric, but all the notions, any fancy tools, and all patterns. So after making this blouse, I'm left with these fabrics and $2 to spend on a pattern, which is not a lot. Kind of like this fabric, which again, not a whole lot. When I hold it up like this, it looks like it's enough for a vest, but we all know that's not how sewing works. I think I have just enough to scrape together the front of a vest, but once again we'll have to do some careful fabric management and potentially some creative problem solving too. Now for two Canadian dollars I can get, well, I'm basically limited to free patterns, and Mood does have a free vest pattern, but I kind of already went over that process in the first video, so I thought let's shake it up a little bit and use another method and make a pattern from a vest that I already own. Enter this bad boy. It was, I believe, the only piece of clothing I purchased during my three years living in Denmark, and it fits pretty well, so I thought, let's clone it. Now, I have seen some videos out there about how to clone existing clothing, but a lot of them involve some sort of specialized tool, whether that's an awl, a tracing wheel, a cutting mat, some fancy pattern paper. One even used a giant felt mat, but Let's be honest, if you're just getting into sewing, or you're working on a budget, an awl or a tracing wheel is not going to be the best use of your money. Don't get me wrong, they can be really useful, but because they're super specialized and you'll only use them in really specific situations, you're better off putting your money into something you're going to use each and every project, like a good pair of scissors. These, for example, only cost me $11 and I absolutely love them. I'll link them down in the description in case anyone else is looking for great budget scissors. They look super aesthetic, they're quite sharp, and I personally find them really comfortable to use. I am not sponsored by them or anything, I just legitimately love them. I've converted my mother into using them and I've owned this pair for over a year. Yelsemi used them each and every video and they're still super sharp. What I think I'm saying is that if you're on a budget, you're probably better off spending $11 on these than $7 on this. But to get back on track, I'm going to show you how to trace a piece of clothing in your wardrobe without any special tools. All you'll need is a pen or pencil, a sewing pin, some paper, and some sort of slightly cushioned surface. In the past, I've used a yoga mat and that worked super well. That's what I did on my H&M Goes Edwardian video. Uh, another alternative would be those foam puzzle mats. I actually picked these two up from the side of the road specifically for this video. But if you don't have either of those laying around your house, I'm pretty sure you can also just use some basic house linens. I haven't tested this theory out yet, but let's go down to the table because I want to try it out. So I've got all my material here and ready to go and I figure I'll do the first one, the front half, using the foam mat here because I know that that technique is going to work, I've already done it that way. And then I'll do the back half using the linens and bed sheets and see how that turns out and then at the end we can kind of compare and contrast, see if there are any really obvious benefits to using one material versus the other. And for paper, I'm literally just using an old promotional poster that I found in the garbage here a few years ago. It's nothing special. And I think the only big secret here is just to use a piece of paper that's large enough to fit your entire thing on it. Maybe that means taping a few pieces of paper together, whatever you gotta do. But you definitely don't need to go out and get fancy paper for this.
I have both of the front pattern pieces copied over. They're not 100% finalized, but I do have the basic outline sort of copied over and that went really well. And I did sort of develop a technique that I liked really well, which was to use a small number of pins to sort of anchor key points of the vest and to keep everything nice and taut and in place and then to go in with a pin and sort of connect multiple little dots between those anchor points. That was working really well. So now to switch out the foam for some fabric and what I've got here is I've just got a basic towel and then a sheet. And so what I'm thinking I'm going to try to do is I'm going to put the towel as the base layer against the table and I'm thinking that's going to give me a little bit of extra like cushion and sort of help me imitate the pinnableness of the foam layer because that was really handy, let me tell you. And then as a like smoother, flatter layer to sit against the bottom of the paper, I think I'm just gonna use a few layers of this clean sheet. And I'm hoping that's gonna give me similar results. I would love to be able to pin into the fabric in the same way that I was able to pin into the foam, but we're gonna find out. I haven't tried this out yet, so wish me luck. Happy to report that that technique worked really, really well. It was slightly more finicky than using the foam, for sure. The needles had a little bit more of a tendency to sort of spontaneously pop out from the fabric. Although a little hack that I did find that helped a little bit was instead of inserting the needles straight up and down, was to insert them at a bit of an angle and that did give them a little bit more grip in the fabric. I will note that if you're using a thinner paper, which I did, I purposely switched to a much thinner paper for the back half just to see how this technique would work if you're using something like, say, a wrapping paper. And my pencil did definitely have a tendency to want to punch through the paper more because it was thinner. So definitely be aware of that and just go like a little bit lighter as you're tracing things out. But that's really not a big deal. So now the next step is I'm going to go through here and clean up these pattern pieces. So I'm gonna take my ruler and for things that are supposed to be straight, I'm gonna make them straight. I'm going to clean everything up, make the curves look nice and good, add things like green lines. And then lastly, I'm going to walk my seams and just make sure that all the seams that are supposed to match up in the final garment are the same length, add some registration notches, that shouldn't take too long because we know that it's coming from a garment where the seams are already true, but you know, there is inevitably some human error in the copying process. So I'm gonna take maybe about 10 minutes to do that and then we should be ready to cut things out from the final fabric. Possibly not surprisingly, but it took me slightly longer than 10 minutes because I had a little bit of confusion about where the waistline was sitting on a couple of these pieces, but I think I figured it out and I'm pretty happy with the pieces, which is good because I don't technically have room in my budget for a mock-up. Okay, if you've been here a while, you probably already know that most of my mock-up fabric is completely free and usually pulled from the side of the road, but for the sake of this challenge, let's just say I live somewhere where that's not an option. So now that I have my pattern, I am almost ready to start cutting out the fabric. I just need to give these a good press first because they have already been washed. They went through the wash at the same time as these fabrics, but I have not had time to iron them yet. As you can tell from looking at this poor little burgundy bias tape, which did not survive the wash very well. It's looking significantly worse for wear. 
and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to resuscitate it, but I am certainly going to try. Okay, everything is pressed and flat and ready to go. And as I was ironing it all, I was thinking about my approach to this vest, specifically that this fabric is incredibly lightweight. It's almost sheer. And so I was thinking I should probably interline it with this blue cotton back here, which is much stiffer and it'll just give it a nice body and it'll also probably make the garment a lot more durable. And then I realized I actually probably have enough of this blue fabric here to make an entire mock-up, which honestly made me quite happy. Now, I know that there are many of you out there that are anti-mock-up and that is totally fine to each their own, but I know that for me, I want this garment to be a staple of my wardrobe. I want to get a lot of wear and use out of it. And that for me personally, that also means that it has to fit really well, be really comfortable, and just look really sharp. And what better way to ensure all of that than to make a mock-up? Plus, since I have to use most of those pieces anyway in the interlining, it's not even really a big detour, not much time lost. So. I think that's gonna be the last thing on the agenda for me today is probably just cutting all of these out from the blue cotton fabric and sewing them up into a mock-up, possibly off camera overnight. And then I'll check back in with you guys tomorrow once I have a wearable mock-up and we can see how it fits. So I'll talk to you tomorrow. So here it is, and I can confirm that I am super glad that I made this because I did end up making some small changes that I think are really going to step the fit of this vest up just one extra notch. So let me walk you through it. First of all, I put it on and right away the fit was pretty good, but the most noticeable problem was that I had some weird gaping at the back of the neck. It just wasn't fitting right, there was too much fabric in there. So what I did was I went in and took some of that fabric out. I wasn't able to pin it on my body, it just was kind of an awkward place to reach, didn't have great access, so I took it off my body, kind of made an educated guess about how much to pin out, and tried it on and magically somehow managed to get the right amount right on the first try. So that was super easy, problem one solved. The next problem then was that I had some really awkward gaping at the armhole. Honestly, this didn't surprise me because I have had similar problems with other vests in the past having gaping at the armholes. So let me walk you through the three solutions that I came up with how to fix it and which one worked the best for me. Solution number one would have been to throw some easing stitches right inside of this seam allowance here and just to kind of ease this fabric in when I sew the fashion layer to the lining layer. And while I think it could have worked, I just, my intuition told me that there was probably a little bit too much gaping for that to be the most elegant solution. So then I tried solution number two, which was pinching out a dart. So basically kind of finding where the excess fabric was sitting and pinching it and pinning it. So I basically install a dart on the vest. And that worked well in terms of it did make the vest sit flat. I no longer had any gaping, but what I did have was a really awkwardly placed dart. <laughs> okay, like, truth time. On a scale of one to 10, how incredibly awkward is this bust dart? It like, it's just pointing right to my nipple. Doesn't wanna jump into part of the princess seam, just wants to hang out and be like, hey, here's her nipple. It was awkwardly close to the princess seam, but not close enough to just kind of incorporate it into the seam. So I didn't love that option. So then I came up with the third solution and that one is the one that I like the most. And that is that I simply took out a little bit of extra fabric in the center front panel. So you can see here that the stitch line on the side front panel is in the same exact place, but on the center front panel, I had taken out a little bit of fabric right along that edge there. And when I tried that on, that seemed to work really, really well. Almost all of the gaping was gone there might have been just a tiny bit still left, which one, it's kind of normal. You're a human in motion. You're never gonna have a garment that fits perfectly flat. So I'm not too stressed about it, but I do think, 
I do think that this is the perfect occasion to then go in and use the easing stitches because this small amount of gaping, I think that is going to be very gracefully solved with those easing stitches. So that is what I've done. Now, the next step is just going to be to take this apart and transfer those markings onto my pattern so that I have the pattern for future vests because I think that this is going to be a very cute pattern that I like and want to reproduce. And then I can use uh, these modified pieces to go ahead and cut out the good fabric that is sitting right there behind me. So that's the game plan. A lot of good progress been made so far this morning, hoping to keep the ball rolling. Yeah, let's hop to it. Everything is all cut out and ready to go, ready for the assembly process. I've also gone in and attached all of the interlining panels to their corresponding fashion panels. This kind of makes them act as one piece of fabric and it's gonna make the assembly process just go a bit smoother and the final result should look a little bit cleaner also. So now the first step in the construction process should be fairly simple. It's going to be to pin and then sew together all of the outer panels of the vest and then to go in and do the same thing for all of the inner lining panels as well. Now, normally a vest would have a facing on the inside front made from the same fabric as the outer fabric of the vest, but I don't think that's going to be an option for this vest specifically, simply because I am so short on fabric. I have nothing but teeny tiny little scraps left over. So I think I'm going to be able to cobble something together, but I don't think it's going to necessarily look like a conventional facing strip, which honestly, that's fine. It's fine with me and it's also very on brand here at Shannon Makes. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the construction process, sewing these all together, and I'll check back in with you once we have something that looks slightly more like a vest. So I've got the outside layer of my vest and I've got the inside lining of my vest, but they're looking still a little bit like hot garbage because I have not pressed my seams yet. Now I know that I always advertise my silly tailoring ham and sausage kits, but I will be the first to admit that this is absolutely a hilarious novelty, but you absolutely do not need one. You can just as easily use a rolled up towel or a wadded up bunch of clean fabric and it'll do the same thing. So I'm going to clip my seams and iron them and then I'll come back and discuss what the next step in this process is going to be once everything's looking a bit smoother. Alright, my seams are all pressed and I've worked a bit on my facing dilemma and I think I found a solution. So I squeezed out two straight strips on the center front behind where the buttons go and then two itty bitty little bias strips for the neckline and I think that's going to be good enough. I could maybe do the armholes too but since they're no longer gaping I'm thinking that shouldn't be necessary. Everything is all pinned down and I think I'm gonna sew this on by hand simply because it's exactly the type of hand sewing that I love. But regardless of which method I choose, it's gonna have to wait till tonight because it is gorgeous weather outside right now and I'm gonna take the rest of the day off to go have some fun in the sun. I'll check back in with you tomorrow. 
Okay, back in the sewing room and things are really starting to come together. Last night I got all the facing sewn on, which is looking fantastic by the way. I also made some good progress on the welt pockets. In fact, I got a bit carried away and had to stop myself before I finished both of them. So check it out. This one's all done. And then this one only has the first step done. So the welt is sewn on, but I haven't cut into it or flipped it through. I figured I'd save it and we could do it together on camera. So let's get welting. Based on certain comments that get left on my videos, a few of you seem to think that I am some kind of sewing genius. So let me set the record straight and say that I absolutely 100% am not. For example, when it came to sewing the lining of this vest to the outside, I literally just Googled it because I don't know how to do that. For those of you interested in the method I used, I'll link the video I followed in the description. It's a pretty cool technique that involves sewing most of the perimeter closed, leaving just a small opening which you use to turn the vest right side out, and then you sew the arms holes closed by pulling them through that small hole. I don't know, it's hard to describe and it looks pretty goofy, but it works really well. The last step was buttons and buttonholes, and I prefer to use my machine's zigzag stitch to manually do this, which does require a bit of prep work, but if you don't have a buttonhole foot, I can assure you that I use this technique all the time. I find it works really well, and actually I even prefer it, but again, it all comes down to personal preference. Alright friends, it is looking sharp. Like really sharp. Like it might fit better than the original vest sharp. But before we take a look at the results, let's talk about cost. So all in all for this challenge, that's the vest and the blouse, I spent 90 kroner, which is roughly $18 Canadian, so I've already completed the challenge with $2 left over, but that's not all. I also have several buttons to add to my stash, a fair amount of blue thread, a good hunk of chalk, some buckles that I didn't end up using, plus a hefty amount of that blue lining fabric, and a little bit of the other extra interlining fabrics. What I don't have left is either of the two main fabrics. I pretty much use them to within an inch of their lives. Usually I save my project scraps in a bin for future creative endeavors, but honestly I'll be lucky if I even have enough to put in my project journal. So I'd call this challenge a great success. I was under budget, I finished with some extra notions to add to my stash, and two amazing garments that I'll get lots of use out of. If you're having fun here, do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up as an offering to the algorithmic gods. And if you'd like to support my near zero waste sewing endeavors, I have a Patreon where you can get early access or extended editions of some videos, monthly vlogs, and other bonus content. My patrons greatly help to support all the behind the scenes expenses like equipment to make sure these videos look and sound as good as possible, and monthly subscriptions to things like Royal free music sources, and I am, as always, eternally grateful for your support. And lastly, speaking of support, as the weather gets nicer out, I can almost guarantee that I'll be diversifying my content beyond purely sewing. There will still be a fair amount of that, but there will probably also be some furniture flips and upcycles sprinkled in as well, much along the lines as these projects here from past summers. 
My creative tendencies are very seasonal and I can already feel the itch to get outside and start sanding down some furniture. And honestly, I think it's probably a healthy way to help avoid burnout. So if you enjoy the channel, please consider checking the other videos out. Even if you are mostly here for the sewing, it'll be more of the same dumpster diving, creative repurposing, problem solving, fun reveals, and cute corgis, just with a slightly different focus. Okay, enough talking, what do you say we roll the beauty shots?